and you know we we haven't devolved from the common ancestor with rats from an evolutionary perspective that long ago i mean like it's millions of years ago you know but it's it's short compared to how long ago we devolved let's say from or we we, we, yeah, devolved, I think that's good enough, from amphibians. And so we're a lot like rats, man, and we have the same skeletal structure, and our brains are quite similar, and the neurochemistry is very, very, very similar. I mean, the neurochemistry is similar right down to the level of crustaceans, which is why I wrote about lobsters in Rule 1, because, our, because I thought it was so bloody amazing when I came across that literature to see that... Um, when lobsters are defeated in a social contest and they lose their hierarchical position, that they undergo neurochemical changes that are analogous to the neurochemical changes that human beings undergo. That's so amazing. And that the same damn drugs that help us, antidepressants essentially, also cheer up defeated lobsters. I mean, it's such a, it's a staggering demonstration of the continuity of biology across, you know, span, unbelievable spans of time. You know, critics have complained that I cherry-picked the data, but they don't know what the hell they're talking about. So, they don't, they don't. I studied the serotonin system for a very, very long time, and I know perfectly well that one of the things that it does is monitor your position in a social hierarchy. And, 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 and it's more important than that, because the serotonin system is a, it's a master control neurochemical system. It's like the conductor of an orchestra. Everything in your brain depends on the serotonin system, which is why, you think about it, like an antidepressant um, decreases the rate at which neurons will reuptake serotonin. You, you need serotonin to modulate the way your neurons work. You take an antidepressant and the serotonin works a little longer. Okay, so what's the consequence of that? Well, let's say you're depressed. Okay, we've got to think about being depressed for a minute. So, when, when you're depressed, this is what happens. All you remember about the past is what's negative. So, everything about the past is negative. All you can see in the present is what's negative. Everything about the present is negative. And nothing about the future is positive at all. And so, so that's interesting, eh? Because it means that something has shifted inside you let's say neurophysiologically, that changes the way you view everything. Everything. Your entire past, the present, and the entire future. And what it essentially does is exaggerate negative emotion to a tremendous degree, that's depression, and suppress positive emotion. Now, there can be variance in that. So sometimes you see depressed people and they come you can think about your own mood in this way, you know. You, you might say, well, I'm not that sad, but I've just sort of lost my interest in everything. Okay, so that means that what's happened is your positive emotion system has been suppressed. Because the positive emotion system is what gives you that interest in things, that pulls you forward to action. Okay? And the negative emotion system, that's anxiety, that's a huge part of it. Frustration, disappointment, grief, pain, that kind of covers it. Anger as well. Though anger is a bit complicated because it's half a positive emotion and half a negative emotion, which is why it feels so good to get angry, by the way, um, and why it also impels you to action, whereas most negative emotions stop you. You know, so, so in in any case, um, if your if your serotonin system, if your serotonin function declines, then all of a sudden everything is negative. You think, well, isn't that interesting? How the hell can it be that something can change within you that changes everything? And the answer has to be, well, it must be a fundamental system that's been changed, right? Because it, it, if it changes everything, it has to be a system on which all other systems depend. And that is the case with the serotonin system. And that's really worth knowing, especially when you also know that the serotonin system counts where you are in the social hierarchy. And so there's this weird kind of one-to-one -one correspondence. Imagine a social hierarchy has ten levels. I don't care what hierarchy you're in. Most people's hierarchies are actually quite small. They sort of consist of the people that they compare themselves to. You know, which is a strange thing, too, because one of the things that you see happening with really successful people is they actually don't get a lot more, a lot happier and a lot less unhappy as they climb the, the, the broad social ladder because the people they compare themselves to change.